Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryland Darling Show. Today is the 4th of October, and today we're doing another pen review. And we're going to do an ink review. So, today we're looking at Jane Davenport Mix Media Inkable Pen Set. She has a couple of them, but this is the one that I was gifted, and I am so grateful that I have this pen, because I always see them in the store, and I thought, oh, they look so cheesy in their plastic and paper packaging, but upon getting to inspect it more closely, this pen isn't that bad. It's not that bad at all. So, we're going to take a look at the pen. <clears throat> we're going to tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. We're going to give you some measurements, tell you how much it weighs. And we're going to do a writing sample. And we're going to show you the mess that I just made right now. So that's exciting. All right, here we go. Oh, we're also going to be doing a review of, oh, not diamond. Um, we're going to be doing a review of Andy, Wall, Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple. This is uh, purple ink, obviously, and this is the only place that I could find it is at Birmingham Pen Company, and um, you can get a 30 ml bottle for $5.99 which is crazy amazing. That's just fantastic. Blown out of my mind, out of the park, off of this world. So, that is really exciting. Let's take a look at the pen, shall we? Uh, snap to cap. I don't know if there is a cap liner. There is a cap liner. Um, white finial, gold finial, interesting. This is not real gold, by the way. This is probably paint. Um, it does say on the cap, it says Iridium Point, Germany. It doesn't say if it's a fine, a medium, or a broad. It just says... Iridium Point, Germany. So, today's ink is Andy War Warhol Pop Art Purple. Why can't I say Warhol? I don't know. It's a weird word. And, um, already I'm noticing a leaking issue. That's great. It's fantastic. That's just fantastic. Okay. I think I've got the leaking issue under control. We'll see. Today is October the 4th. And today is Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. <clears throat> I have not written with this. I have not done anything except fill it with Pop Art Purple. First impression already is that it's smooth and that it writes. I primed the feed maybe a little too well. But I did that on purpose because it seems like every time I prime a pen for ink, it it doesn't want to prime. So, pen is a 
Jane Davenport. Incredible fountain pen. Ink readable. The ink is I think it's actually Birmingham, Bir Birmingham Andy Warhol, Birmingham, Pen yeah. All right. Today is going to be a great day. Tiny little bits of bleed through starting to come through. But I would totally use the back side of this paper. It's heavy ghosting. This is the Premier Premium Journal by Premier. <clears throat> Alright, let's see. Let's do some writing samples on some new fountain pen friendly Birmingham Pen Company. This is a generous gift from pen friend Chris. And because we're using Birmingham ink, I'm gonna try the Birmingham Pop Art Purple on the Birmingham on the Birmingham Pen Company Tamoy River Paper. 68 GSM. So. Birmingham. Company. Warhol. Pop art purple. Oh, I'm noticing something weird going on. I have something in the tines. This is slick paper. I mean, like, wow. So slick. 68 GSM. No bleed through. That is crazy. Like, I can't even see through the page. It's so crazy. You can't barely even see through the page. Wow. Tamoy River paper is amazing. I couldn't even see any ghosting. Let alone bleed through. That is amazing. Now I want a book of this stuff. <laughs> I want one with lines though. I don't know if they have ones with lines. We'll have to look. But that is amazing. All right, let's move on to Claire Fontaine. I don't know, we haven't done an example in the Claire Fontaine of this ink, so that's exciting. Mm. 
Birmingham Pen Company Warhol Pop Art Purple Fantastic. This ink is great. It's a beautiful purple. I do wish that I'd have put it in a stub now. <clears throat> but it doesn't have a hard readability. It's got good readability. No bleed through on Claire Fontaine. That's really nice also. Alright, let's move into some cheaper paper. Well, I don't know how much cheaper, but... Let's move into the Fabriano Eco Qua 85 GSM. Very nice. Five seconds of drying. Normal, heavy ghosting. No bleed through on the back of this paper. I would totally use the back side of this paper. That's fantastic. All right, now even more cheaper paper. Let's move into the CVS caliber notebook. Pop our purple. Only one of the purples that I didn't get to do last month that I really wanted to do. So that's why we're doing it today. <clears throat> and there's no bleed through on the back end, totally use the back side of this paper. Alright, now we're gonna move on to some super cheap paper. This is Walmart brand. They had four of these for 78 cents. That makes this about 13 cents. Maybe 15 cents, something like that. At any rate, <laughs> my math isn't that great. All right. Very nice. I like it. No bleed through on the back. I'd totally use the back side of this paper. Alrighty. Now let's get into some incredibly cheap paper. This is Mead 10.5 by 7.5. Let's 
asking about me. A little bit of bleed through, but only in certain spots. Other than that, I would totally use the back side of this paper. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's do some pen tests. Let's see, how does he start out? Um. Let's see if we can look back on yesterday's. Um, flex test. Um, A little bit of line variation, not much. Um, well, wetness and flow. Keeps up with the flow. Smear test, we've already done plenty of those. Reverse writing. Ooh, actually, that's smoother than this way. Ooh, A plus. Ooh, I might have to think about that one. Anyway. And then the peer gift system test. A plus. All right. This gets this cheap, cheap pen. I mean, we're talking like, how much does it cost online? $6.50 for this pen. It's totally worth every cent. I don't know how I went this long thinking that this was a crappy pen. The only thing that is not up to my type of specs is the converter. This is the converter that comes with the pen. It is a push-pull converter, which is very difficult for saturating the feed without oversaturating the feed. You know what I'm saying? So that is the only problem that I had with this entire pen. I put um, a Monteverdi Monza converter in here because it has the little knobs on the thing, and when you twist it, it's not like a Jin Hao where it's elongated on one side and your finger slips and you shove ink all over the place. Love the Monteverdi converters. They are amazing. I just bought all brand new Monteverdi pens, Monteverdi Monzas. We're going to look at those tomorrow. So look forward to that. Totally forgot to do some size measurements for you. Okay, so let's do some measurements, shall we? All right, the pen rests at 5.464 inches. 5.464 inches at 138 millimeters. Just in case you're wondering, 138 millimeters. The pen weighs in completely full of ink at 21.69 grams, 20.07 grams with no ink. The pen itself rests at 12.95 grams 
which is a pretty light pen. Comparatively, I would say that it, it's right up there with my Pilot Petite 1. The Pilot Petite 1 rests at 9 grams. <clears throat> and um, the Lamy Vista weighs in at 19. So it is a very light pen. Weighing in at only 12.95 grams, which is awesome. It's a very light pen. It writes well. Um, the cap is 56 millimeters. The diameter of the cap is 11.1 millimeters. The diameter of the grip goes from 7.7 .7 millimeters all the way up to 7. Point, no, 8.6 millimeters. Um, the grip section is about 24 millimeters. The body of the pen is. 78 millimeters. Um, the nib is a number five nib. Can you guys see anything I'm doing? Probably not. So sorry about that. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing over here. At any rate, um, the nib is 5.5 millimeters across, which means it's a number five nib. The um, grip goes from uh, 7.1 to 8.9. The grip is about 25 millimeters long. The body is 78 millimeters long. The cap is 56.8 millimeters long. The cap is 10 millimeters. The body is 11.11 11 millimeters. The cap by itself The cap by itself is 7 grams, 7.11 grams. Pen by itself is 12.94 grams. Posts, it does post. Makes it very heavy at 20.5 grams, which is. I don't know why it's heavier that way than this way. Oh no, it's almost heavier this way. Points 20.7 grams. That's cool. If you guys have any other questions, please leave those in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer them. Let's do some measurements, shall we? The space pen weighs 17.11 grams. Uncapped. Uncapped, it weighs 8.89 .8 grams. It does post in order to make it a tolerable length. But if you had itty bitty hands, you could totally use this unposted. Um, unposted, the pen stands at 86 millimeters. And a posted, the total length of the pen is 156 millimeters. The pen itself is 86 millimeters. The cap by itself is 72 millimeters. The width of the cap is 10 millimeters. The width of the body of the pen is 8 millimeters and tapers down to we'll say 4.6 millimeters yeah, 
about four, mil four, four or five millimeters. It's tapered, so it's difficult to uh, tell you. It's 5.6 millimeters. If you think that these, that I should be doing pen reviews with all of these little things while I'm doing the reviews, please let me know. I think that that would be some interesting information to note. So um, I'm going to try and remember to do these when I do the pen reviews. But uh, I apologize in advance if I, if I forget. And it's a great pen. I like it. Anyway, I hope that was helpful to some of you. Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Killer bye.